Good morning. Good morning. I want to say good morning to everyone uh, in the room this morning, to all the ladies and the gentlemen. I want to welcome you to Breakfast of Champions, hosted by Maryland Denise Coaching Services. Um, we're on the line starting at 5.30 in the morning with some um, good worship music by Miss Mimi Houston. Um, and then we come on at 6 in the morning um, with our speaker for the day. Um, <clears throat> so just go ahead and relax, get your coffee, get your breakfast, and um, just relax and just listen to this music and just just welcome God into the morning. Um, so let's go ahead. I want to open up with a scripture and then we'll do a prayer. And then I'll go ahead with my takeaways from yesterday as I listen um, to Miss Peggy. Um, the scripture that I chose was Ecclesiastes 3 and 1, um, to everything, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heavens. Um, I think that's um, very important, you know, just as we go through life, you know, seasons change, different um, things in our lives changes, um, and just you know, God's promise and God's word just kind of letting us know that, you know, he's going to be with us as we go through life and uh, as we go through things and, um, you know, and embrace the change. You know, every change is, is not a bad thing. It's just God elevating us and maturing us and growing us and pruning us and preparing us for what's next. So I just want to, um, thought this uh, scripture was fitting for what Ms. Marilyn is going to be talking about this morning. Um, let's just go ahead and open up the room in prayer before we just go ahead and get started. Father, I just want to thank you this morning for just waking us up this morning and just bringing us into room in this room all together again. Lord, I just want to thank you, my God, for just your grace and your mercy, my God. You give us new mercies every day in grace. And Father, I just want to thank you for your love for us, your your patience with us, your forgiveness, my God, your teaching, send us in these rooms to hear your word each and every day, my God, bringing these speakers in this room, my God, the kindness of their heart to give us and pour, pour out to us, my God, um, the things that they have, their wisdom, my God, the spreading your word, my God, I thank you for anointing them, my God, and appointing them, my God, and giving them the heart that they have, Father. And Lord, I ask that you just continue to bless them as they continue to bless us, Father. Lord, I ask that you just continue to go with us, my God, today as we go our various ways, my God. Place your hand on our steering wheel, my God, and lead us and guide us, my God. Go before us, Father. And I ask that you just have your way in this room this morning, my God, your sweet presence in the room, Father. Um, <clears throat> just guide us, Father. And um, give us the ear to hear what we need to hear, my God, out of the message this morning, Father. Lord, I just pray and ask it all in your name, Jesus. Amen. Again, I just want to say uh, just thank you for just coming into the room this morning. Uh, and those who are going to be listening to the replays later on today, I just want to say uh, welcome and just thank you. So I uh, listened to the replay yesterday, last night from Miss Peggy, and she just full of wisdom. It was just so much. I just kind of just stopped writing because it was just so much that she had said in, in, in that little time frame that it was just so valuable, all her, the words that she spoke and, and everything. And um, I just kind of took away, um, basically what she was saying was that even there's life after disappointments and disappointments can be, you know, not only just divorce, breakups, or, you know, things that we go through with our families and, and we think they just got the best of us. There's life after that, but we just have to um, ask God to help us to get through those difficult times and, you know, learn the lesson and don't give up and just keep going forth. And that's rather either you, you know, you're starting over with your family, with kids, or just starting over if you don't have um, family and kids. And just, we just have to just uh, keep our eyes on him and, and ask him to guide us because we can't do it in, um, on our own strength. And so it was just so much that she said 
um, going through that as she went through life with going through her divorces and and, and raising her children and um, you know and and she made that statement they quit her um, and stuff like I just thought that was um, so funny how, when she said that because when you think about it she said they quit me you know so but I just think you know that that's one way of looking at it you know and but you just take it and move forward and so I just think that was really good just her whole everything that she spoke it was just so full of wisdom yesterday what she was saying I just thank God for just bringing Miss Peggy in this room with us this morning in uh, this week anyone have anything else to say this morning <clears throat> from the takeaway from yesterday or just really all week Because I know all week it's really been um, really been a good week, you know. All week, just um, with Miss um, Shelley with her interview, and then Mr. Harlan coming on and talking, and just giving all their wisdom, and Miss Jocelyn, I think that's how you pronounce her name, coming in and just talking about her business. Uh, I just think it's just everything was just good. I just like how Miss Marilyn has changed up the room a little bit from before. Does anyone have anything to say um, this morning? <clears throat> good morning. Good morning, Miss Marie. Hello, beautiful. How are you this morning? I just want to say I have enjoyed indeed all week long everything and I just want to make up when Miss Nancy's I mean not Miss Nancy Miss Peggy said yesterday he quit me it it, it brought a light bulb on with me mm -hmm. because you know that's what I, I thought about it. I said you know what that happened to me too. He quit me long, you know. I stayed in it as long as I could till I realized this is choking me. This is smothering me. And not just in my, my marriage, but even with my children, when they stopped wanting to listen and stuff, I said, wait a minute. That's what they did. They quit me. And I had to let go so they could come back, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I I like that right there. That's reality right there. Cause mm -hmm. a lot of times, especially for those of us that are, have that type of a loyalty spirit for people, but people don't have that for you. You have to realize that when they quit, they quit. Mm -hmm. And you have to keep going though. You got to remember that the first thing is your loyalty to, to the Lord and then to yourselves. So if other people don't don't do that, then you just have to keep going, you know. So I I, I enjoyed that part, and then I, a mm -hmm. uh, Tambra, I enjoyed her um, on Monday, putting a putting a reality to what people do, you know. That's why CDL license is itself is a profession, if you, a professional job. So people don't think about you ride and some people think about, well, they just in a the truck, they drive and they ain't, that ain't nothing. But that's a whole lot. That's a whole lot. Mm -hmm. And I was grateful for her to bring that to the forefront to make us mindful of what people do. And especially when it's women, I ever, you know, she just took, took a whole nother twist to that. And I love it, I love it. It made me very mindful. I need to, I don't have her number, so I got to get her number mm -hmm. so I can, can uh, text her and let her know that I love her and I'm thinking about her. And it made, it made me do it. You know, I have a friend, she, she doesn't drive an 18-wheeler, but she does charter buses. And she's always all over the United States. And sometimes she'll call me in the middle of the night and I'll get on up and, and listen to her 
you know, sometimes she needs someone to talk to, to keep her woke, to, to let them know. And then I, and I didn't even think about it on the truck driver side. I just thought, cause that's my friend, you know, she called me whenever she get ready. We've been friends for over 40 years. So mm-hmm. we just do what we do, you know, but it's, it's a whole spectrum of people out there that does that. And we don't realize that. So I enjoyed that. And then, and then I I enjoyed everything this week. I'll tell you, I've gotten so much, so many good nuggets that you know it's just great. It's really, really great. So I just wanted to say I did enjoy it. I may not say a whole lot, but I enjoy I am enjoying this time. Mm-hmm. And you know, and I know that that Miss Merlin is gonna come put that icing and that cherry on the cake. And I just commend her for her endurance during the time that she's going through. And I lift her up in her family. And I pray that every lady on this line got some good out of it. And I want y'all to have a great weekend. I love each and every one of you for real, for real, for real. Thank you for letting me share. Thank you for sharing that, uh, Miss Marie. Yes, we love you too. And um, like you were saying, I just want to piggyback off what you were saying. Yeah, when she Miss Peggy said he quit me, yeah, that was that was a um, <clears throat> I'm have to coin that statement um, when she said that because you think about the husband, the boyfriend, the kids, everybody. So we just have to, you know, accept it and let go and and move forward, move forward, and just ask God to help us to go through it. And uh, another thing too, like uh, Miss Katamber, yeah, I, I've I've often see, you know, I see a lot of female truck drivers just on the road on my way to work and things like that. And I used to, I always think like, man, uh, that's 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 like a lot. But when she did her um, her interview with Miss Shelley Monday, it just kind of opened her eyes up, you know of the life of of you know truck drivers, and then by her being a female. I think I had spoke on that when I was had that day. And um, I just want to just commend her for doing that because that's like a lot for doing that or just any, any women, women that does that for a living. So thank you for sharing that, Miss Marie. Anyone else have anything they want to share this morning? Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Miss Tanisha. Um, I wanted to uh, piggyback off of Miss Peggy. Um, you know, when I was sitting there listening to her uh, yesterday, mm-hmm. uh, it just showed how strong she was as a woman to still, even though he quit her, she still did her woman duties, mm-hmm. you know? And that made me sit there and realize like, man, you know, I know I was young when I got married and I was, uh, the temp to go off and and ready to fight and everything but she still stayed calm and you know was cooking breakfast while he was still being um the disobedient the rude one and so it stuck with me too when she said he quit me but even though he quit her she still did her duties as a woman as a wife mm-hmm. so that would kind of stuck with me and um I just command Miss Peggy for that um thankful for her even being in the group because it also has helped me grow as a woman whenever I decide to get back in it like I don't want to go through anything like that but it's just how you stand your ground as Mm -hmm. being a wife and as a woman so that's what I got out of it yesterday um you look gorgeous today as well so so, uh, (laughs) uh love all you ladies and I hope all y'all have a good day Thank you for sharing that, Miss Tanisha. Yes, Miss um, Peggy, that's why I said she's just full of wisdom. And then just the things that she, how she w- go, went through it and things like that and stay focused and strong and still did the duties, like you said, what, you know, we normal wife does and stuff, even though her husband wasn't, you know, doing right. They just show the, um, the strength that she had, that she have. Um, to endure and go through those things. Um, and that's really why, you know, God is blessing her so much because of these things or how she, you know, just carried herself and got her through it. Thank you for sharing that, Miss Tanisha. 
Anyone have anything else they want to say this morning? Good morning, Toya. Good morning, Miss Tracy. All you beautiful ladies, Toya, you know, you always looking so beautiful. <laughs> um, and, and to say we enjoyed the whole week. This has been a very uh, chaotic week. Um, kind of taking care of my little elderly 89 year old friend. That's my mission as well. And um, I enjoyed also uh, Shelly and the interview um, with the, um, oh my goodness. Um, Jenna. I can't remember her name, Lady Truck Driver. Oh, Katamba. And he's on the road in, in 18, driving 18 wheelers. My hats automatically go off to them because, I mean, you know, James Brown said it's a man's world, but look, these women are handling these. Things. And with so many other things, you know, and so I just commend her highly uh, for just sharing that information. It was a beautiful interview as well. And um, I had no idea though, all the things that, you know, truck drivers go through. I never heard them go into it. I've heard some amazing testimonies of things, you know, how dangerous it can be, um, but, um, it was really a, a very interesting interview and I've always respected 18 wheelers. I don't try to stop, you know, jump in front of them or anything like that. I commend them, respect them. That's a whole lot of machinery that they're pulling and, you know, and um, my life is too uh, important and valuable to be trying to collect some compensation. So I just, um, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed uh, Brother Harlan um, just talking about the love languages and, um, everything um I enjoy I always enjoy everyone I enjoyed him I enjoyed uh Joyce Lynn and um her fashion fashion is is kind of part of me although my business is not up and going right now the way it may be I'm just kind of deciding I'm kind of in between um that but I enjoy her She's such a beautiful person too um I enjoyed uh, Miss Peggy I had to get off the line I had an something to come up but just all week I always I, I gather every time I come in the room it's a blessing and uh, everything we go through God allows so I've just said Lord I allow whatever you whatever you, I, I accept whatever you allow and it may not be, all be easy and God and no one else said that it would be Mm -hmm. But one thing about it, God will never put no more on us than we're able to, to bear. So I'm just grateful this week. Thank God for him allowing me to see another day. And I always wake up with the attitude that this is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. It's a choice. We have a choice. And so I just thank God for just being able to be here to see this day and looking forward to God just blessing the remaining of this day ask that you all keep us in your prayers. Keep my little 89-year-old friend in your prayers. Uh, she's getting ready, coming up on the 23rd. She'll be having um, this very extensive heart uh, procedure. Uh, okay. So just asking for continual prayer for her. Love you all and thank you. Thank you, uh, Miss Stacy, for sharing that. And yes, we will keep your, your friend and, and our prayers, you know, for fast recovery as she go through that God to cover her um yeah like I always said Miss Katamara she what she does is, is just you know amazing what she do and how she just go through it and um you know and just be safe with it because you know sometimes you know I see like when I'm be on the route going out of town and how people won't let them over and and all that. I mean, just let them over. Let's just keep an accident, keep everybody safe, and, and all that. But you know, some people they don't they don't have that that um kind spirit. Um. So I just like I always say, I just salute Miss Katamara for that. And yes, God does um everything that we go through. He either he's done for a reason, for a season, or something like that. He wants something he want us to learn out of this and out of that. So and and so and he allowed to happen so we can learn and grow from it. So I agree with what you were saying hundred percent, Miss Stacy. Yes, Miss Katamara. I see your 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 mic open. Good morning, beautiful. You look beautiful. Good morning. Good, good morning. morning. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, I just want to say um thank you all for the support. 
um, and, and I hope I didn't make it sound too bad. Um, my 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 recollection of it all, I just want to say uh, thank you to Miss Shelley for allowing me to share, and to God be the glory. You know, He calls us to places and things that we never expect, and and that's just what this is. And so um, I'm being obedient. So it's his grace and mercy that that allows me to do what I do because I know that there's a greater purpose of it all and so I submit and surrender myself to that purpose um so thank you all for your support and your kind words I also want to man Miss Peggy oh I love Miss Peggy um just the just what she spoke yesterday put so much into perspective it it helped me I think move at, at least exponentially in, in a healing process that just the fact that once you come to the realization, baby, you were there, but he been gone. He quit you a long time ago. You know what I'm saying? Even even when it came to my previous careers, like that, that job quit you a long time ago. You were still there expending energy and it quit you. It gave up on you before you gave up on it. And so I was just blessed by her words yesterday and and just I'm just blessed by Miss Peggy, period, just from young, young age and, and mm -hmm. experiencing her in college. And so I thank God for that word. And just it's just been a very powerful week, like everyone said. And I just wanted to say, um, I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you all for the support. Um, like I said, it's it's God, it's all God, it's all God, so it's all good. <laughs> thank you for letting me share. Thank you for sharing that, Miss Katamara. Um, yeah, Miss, like I said, Miss Peggy, she's just full of wisdom. That's all I mean, that's all I can say. Um, and she's just full of, full of wisdom with that. Okay, anyone have anything else they want to share this morning before we bring our the lady of the hour on? Good morning, Chat. Good morning, Regina. Oh, uh, you look beautiful as usual. Just Thank got that glow. Um, yeah, uh, Miss Peggy does put things into perspective, and I like the way she, um, you know, uses her words with it. You know, you you wouldn't even think to put that to put it like that um, when a person, you know, starts acting different and changing around you, and like you say, being disrespectful, even if they're doing it on the slide, they they actually quit you a long time ago. You know, mm -hmm. I hadn't even thought to even think of it like that. You know. Um, so, but there, that's just another way that, you know, Miss Peggy has a way with words. And I was just thinking, um, with Katambra, um, you know, being that truck driver, um, for one, just the trucking business itself is not for the weak. Uh, my husband and I, well, we actually got, I guess, um, bamboozled, but we started a, a trucking business with, went in with a partner, um, and started a trucking business and, I mean, um, it's 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 a lot of work. It's a lot of paperwork. It's a lot of things you got to do. It's just, it's a lot to it, and it's very stressful. Like to the point to where uh, I just couldn't do it. <laughs> it's so much too. You know, it's it's you got to be up on all these different things. You got to like the drivers got to have insurance. You got to do drug tests. You got to keep all kind of logs. It's 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 a lot that goes into it that you know that we don't know about. So, you know, it's not for the week. And then as far as like on the road, like, but even by us, like, you know, starting the little trucking business that we did for the, the amount of time that we did, um, you pay, I like pay attention and look more, you know, to the things of like the drivers and the stuff that the drivers go through. And just how uh, cars are just blatantly, just, they just disregard Mm -hmm. You know, truck driver, like me and my husband, like my husband he is a truck driver. You know, he's a, he's a truck driver as well. Um, he's not doing it anymore. Um, he's working somewhere else now, but because um, I wanted him to stay home more. You know, he was in an oil field, truck driving an oil field and stuff, and he was gone all the time. But um, just how people just pull up and just cut them off. Like they can just stop on the dime. I'm, and my husband's like, they just don't know. You know, you have to give you know, the proper distance. Mm -hmm. And when truck drivers put their signal on, you know, you need to, to break right, let them over. And for one, I'm afraid they might not see me. I ask my husband all the time, how far can that mirror see? You know, can, cause you know, we have a blind spot in a car. So, you know, I'm trying to see, I, they're, they're crazy just to do that. If you ask me, I was like, cause what if they can't see you in a certain part of the mirror? He was like, 
Yeah, they can see you. He said, it's just, but people just still need, you know, they don't do it. They just need to do it, you know? So I've taken stuff like that, in, you know, into consideration after, you know, going through and having us set up all the different little things and take the different classes. It's, it's a lot that goes into it. Katembra didn't go into all the, like the paperwork part of it. But it's a lot, like it's a lot, it's a whole lot. So hats off to her on that. Um, and like I said, you know, Miss Peggy, Peggy and Nan, you know, everybody that comes to this um, room in the morning just brings so much. So mm -hmm. uh, I just really enjoy it. And I, I, I don't know, I thought I had my clock set, baby. I done hopped up, I'm like, oh Lord. And then my link didn't want to work this morning trying to get on. I said, the devil is a lot. So um, thank you. and. Uh, Enjoy your day, Todd. Okay. Thank you for sharing, uh, Miss Regina. Um, everything you were saying is so true. Like I said, these people driving there, they, they just so, I don't know, they, they just need to let the truck drivers, let them over and stuff. I see so much, especially when I'm traveling, going out of town and stuff like that. People just be mean, don't want to let them over and stuff like that. So thank you for sharing that. Anyone have anything else to say this morning? Um, hey, Todd, I had something else to say. Um, I have a lot enough to do on the replays because it's been a long week, but I wanted to just kind of uh, piggyback uh, off of Miss Regina with the truck driving. Uh, my hats go off to uh, Miss Katamara because uh, my father drives trucks and he's been doing it for like 47 years, mm -hmm. you know, and so I see and hear what they go through, you know, so I make it my business to check on them because, you know, they get sleepy, you know, it's a lot of driving they do, you know, mm -hmm. and it's so much disrespect. Man, I have seen my daddy go through so many wrecks because mm -hmm. cars want to zoom in front of them and then hit their brakes, not knowing that that's a lot of weight that they're carrying, mm -hmm. you know, and so I commend any truck driver and stuff, and I just wish more people would respect them on the road because man, they go through a lot. And if, it, if they look at, if it wasn't for them, the things that we need in life, we wouldn't have in these, these cities and these states, mm -hmm. you know? So, uh, Katamara, uh, my hats go off to you. Stay safe, sis. I, I know <laughs> exactly what uh, you go through, especially, uh, being a truck driver. Um, and I commend any woman that get behind that as well. So, um, that's what I wanted to share. Thank you for sharing that, Miss Tanisha. You're right. Like I said, you're right. And it's the thing about it. You just think about it. It's 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 sometimes on the road rough, and we in the regular vehicle. So you can Im only imagine what it is how they have to be on the on the driver. They on the drop. Excuse me, driving the trucks and you know and doing all that and things they thinking about. They probably they thinking about a million and one things. You know when they on their road because they they priority is, is safe too and stuff. So. Uh, like I say, I wait. I just want to just give my hat, tip my hat to her, and for her doing what she does for a living. Uh, let me just go to the chat right quick. I look like Miss Ladriba said, "Mine too, Regina. He's a driver. He drives train drivers in the oil field. I'm always praying for traveling and grace for his crew and others on the road. That's right, Miss Ladriba. We also, yeah, we have to pray, constantly pray." Sometimes we not pray pray for us, pray for the others because some people just you know they don't have the heart that we have. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, well I think it's time for Miss Marilyn to come on um, with her subject, and her subject is um, you know to teach how to love while leaving a season and embracing the new season. So welcome, Miss Marilyn. You on my, you on me. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, Miss Latoya. Good, good to see you this morning. And uh, thank you for uh, being such a great host in the room this morning. And uh, we really appreciate you. Appreciate your timeliness, all of that. To all of our Breakfast of Champions, how are y'all doing this morning? It's Friday. We made it to the end of the week. <laughs> in, in spite of everything, it is so good to, you know, be able to press through. I don't know about y'all, but, you know, every day of my life is a press. 
And every day I can get up to do it all over again, you know, I'm like, thank you, Lord. You know, I don't know what all today is going to hold, uh, but I know without a shadow of a doubt, the same way that you did it yesterday and the same way you did it in times past and the same way that you did it for my family, the same way you did it for my loved ones, same way you did it for my coworkers, you're going to do it for me too. And uh, so I always thank, say thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph, you know, especially in Christ Jesus. So, uh, well, I want to stop for a moment. I hadn't done this in a while to go through and say hello to everyone. Uh, Mrs. Anita, good morning to you. Good morning. Mrs. Brittany, good morning to you. Uh, Mrs. Sharwin Johnson, good morning, good morning. Miss Nene, good morning, good morning. I don't know how you choose the right music every morning. And when I say every morning, every morning, sometimes I could be just laying there, you know, still in the bed, still pondering over a few things. And it's a song that she'll bring back to my remembrance. And I'm like, that's the song that's going to push you through today, you know? So thank you for your continued obedience with that. Miss Donisha, good morning to you. Miss Evelyn Taylor, good morning, good morning. Uh, Mrs. Felicia Johnson, good morning. Miss Delcina Mangrum, good morning. Uh, Miss Kathy Mitchell, good morning. Miss Katambra Jeffries, good morning, good morning. Mrs. Ladriba, good morning to you. Uh, Mrs. Cookie Marie, good morning. Mrs. Nancy Lyons, good morning. Miss Peggy Roxbury, good morning, good morning. Miss Regina Oliver, good morning. Mrs. Stacy, I see she changed that last name on there, done. <laughs> good morning to you. Miss Sheena Fight, good morning, good morning. Miss Shelly Roman, good morning. Miss Chick Holmes, good morning. Miss Shirley Clark, good morning. Mrs. Tanisha Bright, good morning. And Mrs. Tamika Franklin, good morning to you as well. Amen. Amen. Well, I tell you what, if you see any of your neighbors that are missing in the room, why don't you tap them this morning, wake them up, get them in the room and let them know the Breakfast of Champions is getting ready to, you know, uh, you know, uh, share some more nuggets. We've had some awesome, when I tell you some awesome nuggets this week, oh my God, the things that have, that I have learned you know, I thought about uh, Mrs. Mrs. Shelley uh, when she came in interviewing Mrs. Um, uh, Mrs. Catambra, and I'm going to see if I can get this on here. When she was interviewing Mrs. Catambra, you know, sometimes we really don't know what life uh, is like, you know, on the road like that, especially as a female, you know, sometimes for men, you know, we think that the men, they can handle it, whatever comes up in their lives. But, you know, believe it or not, they go through things just like, you know, our women do. But just to hear it uh, from a woman's perspective and, you know, we don't even think about, you know, they still have their everyday life. They still have their their menstruals, their cycles. They still, you know, deal with, you know, the everyday pressures of life, still having to raise children or still having to take care of bills back home. And, you know, that that's a lot to handle. So I definitely commend um, any woman that's out there, but we definitely celebrate our uh, lady that's in the room, you know, letting her know that we are definitely there for her, you know, and uh, we definitely need to start that that travel hotline with Mrs. Katambra, you know, every now and then just get her on the line and, you know, uh, be able to check on her and, and, you know, hear what's going on with her out there and, you know, just praying and even ask us if you need anything because, you know, sometimes we, you know, we underestimate and we think that people have everything that they need, but, you know, the same struggles are out there too, you know, and, uh, but I think that, you know, being able to do that would be, would be great. It's just a, a great show and an act of love. Also, I also coming in on Tuesday, Mr. Harlan, you know, teach me how to love through giving, you know, that was, that was amazing to me, you know, giving on so many different levels, uh, giving uh, from the heart of a pastor, uh, giving from the heart of a father. Um, he loves to talk about his marriage and I, I really commend him for that, you know, giving uh, as a, um, you know, even as a son, you know, it's so many ways that we, God has to teach us how to love in those particular areas, you know, and then on Wednesday, Mrs. Uh, Joyce Lynn uh, coming in and <clears throat> even in the midst of her not feeling well, uh, she still was present there. And I think that's one thing that we uh, definitely um, 
uh, have learned how to do here is to be resilient and to keep pressing through in spite of what it is that you're going through. You know, all the Lord says that, you know, that showing up is going to be half the battle in life. And I thank God for that as she shared, you know, those nuggets of those creative moments that she has for uh, being an entrepreneur and, you know, uh, creating those uh, uh, various images that she does. And then on Thursday, boy, our sister really knocked it out the park, Mrs. Peggy uh, Roxbury. I, I love to hear her stories. Uh, I love to hear how she is pressed. I love to hear how she's pressing through, you know. I think sometimes, and we're just, just going to lead right into the message this morning, I think sometimes, um, you know, we have a thought of um, all I want to do is get there. Where, wherever there is, whether there is, you know, to a place called peace, you know, to a place called joy, you know, uh, to a happy marriage, to having uh, raised good children, seeing them be successful in life. You know, sometimes we're busy, busy trying to get there, you know, and as I was listening to Peggy, I, I understood that there was a there was a shedding every time she had to go through a new new phase. Uh, I think we're all coining that phrase that she used that he quit me, you know, and uh, that was the the dawn of a new era in her life. You know, when people make decisions or you make decisions or, uh, you know, whatever, because it can be twofold. You know, sometimes people can make decisions for you. Uh, but it is a dawning of a new era in your life. And I believe what happens is, uh, you know, the Lord never leaves us without um, a, 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 a warning or a, a nudge or indicator that change is taking place. I think many times we may ignore um, the nudging or the pricking of the heart, you know, and um and and we just kind of bypass it, but change is always taking place, no matter what you say. Whether whether the marriage was going into a healed place, or whether the marriage was coming to an end, whether the children were going from first grade to second grade, it was a change. It was a dawning of a new era. And before things begin to start shedding off in our lives, um, it's just like right now we we get a feel of a little bit of winter because it is still winter, but we also get a feel of spring trying to come in sometimes. But no matter how bad spring wants to come in, she can't come until it's her time. Okay, she can peep in all she wants to, but she can't come in until her time. And I believe that what God does is he gives us time to prepare, to prepare for the shift. You know, so this morning we're going to be talking about, you know, teach me how to love even while I'm embracing change. You know, I often use this this phrase and, and I wanted to uh, bring up that that clean sheet of paper, you know, to where um, every time I think about change coming in, you know, because we've experienced it. You know, we've all experienced change at one 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 uh, time or another, many many times. But how often do we prepare to turn the page? You know, I think there are, there are indicators that come in uh, when change is here. Just like spring, she tries to come in, she tries to bring that sunshine in, but she doesn't get to stay long. We wish she could come in a little bit early, but I think the winter is still killing off some stuff. And we don't want to push it out before time, you know, because if it does, it's going to dwarf the next season coming in, you know, harvest uh, our farmers, you know, they understand the processing of uh, farming and you don't want your harvest to try to come up before time because it can uh, come in in a premature state, you know, and, and, and I'm saying that, that no matter how bad you know, you may even want change. I'm tired of going through this, you know, or how long, God, are we going to be going through this? I think there is a there is a, a place of stillness that has to come in all of our hearts to understand that it's just the processing of time. 
when I'm when we're shedding from the old, you have to be ready to embrace the new. I think that's what Mrs. Latoya mentioned this morning, uh, knowing how to embrace the new. And believe it or not, uh, many of the new things that are coming in our lives, uh, they really are not familiar to us. You know, the great thing about being a child of God is the Lord shows us things in the spirit, but they're still unfamiliar to us. You really don't know how to process that. You know, I think about um, all the years uh, that I have, um, you know, been attending the Potter's House. Um, I remember all the days of, of travel. Oh, my God. I remember me getting the children up early in the mornings. We would get up like at 5, 530 in the morning, get ready to get on the highway to travel to the Potter's House to get ready for service. And, um, you know, those times it just, it just didn't, it didn't, it didn't really, um, you know, dawn on me that God was preparing me for something that was going to be coming up at that particular time. All the Lord said to do was go. That was such a yearning in my heart for change, though I had a place to be in, you know, I enjoyed the city that I lived in. I, I, I never thought about making a move. I just knew that I needed a change. And somewhere in my heart, um, I knew whatever the change was that I needed in my life was going to be something bigger than me. And uh, there were often times to where I would step outside of a normal circle that I had been in and to go visit and just go ponder upon these new things. Most of the time, um, the major changes that I've made in life, um, I made those just from a nudging from God. There was no proof. There was no, um, there was really no real models in front of me or anything. That was just a, that was just a nudging that something had to change. And that there was a feeling of discontentment that was in my heart. That was, that was spring trying to come in and try to let me know something needed to change. Uh, there were often times where I felt like, um, um, that nobody got me. That was spring trying to come in, let me know change was coming. Uh, there were often times where I would long for fellowship with individuals uh, that we could just speak a common language and I just, I just couldn't find it. But I knew what I was hearing in my heart and I would just often just take a chance. I didn't know that while I was doing that, that I was exposing my children to change also at the same time. Though the children didn't understand what was taking place, I was their mother and they just followed the lead. Uh, when the children got, got to, when we would go, go to the Potter's house, uh, the children would be in amazement. They were young. When I tell you they were very young, uh, nine, 10, maybe 11 when we first started going. And they would all often sit in amazement as to uh, what um, stepping outside of the box would look like. And in their heart, they were having to embrace new things while also going back to the old. And it's something about when a seed gets planted in your heart, no matter how much you want to ignore the fact that the seed has been planted, you know, you got to let that thing take its course. You know, and um, I would often have to keep going back because this thing was in me now. It was something that was rising up in me that I sent something, you know, and, and it's like every time I got to that place, that would be like a sense of joy uh, that would I, I just couldn't explain it, you know, and I would ride all the way back home. You know, I would do little things like pick up CDs and Y'all, I had all kind of tape ministries going on because I wanted to remember what it was that I heard and I wanted to keep visualizing what I saw. It kind of reminded me of uh, the book of Habakkuk uh, when Habakkuk was crying out to God about something that he saw and he wondered, God, how long are you going to stand back and watch this? Because I know if I see it, 
you're seeing it too. And sometimes we're stuck in between two worlds of where you want to go and where you presently are right now, you know? And that's how I felt at that particular time. And the only thing that I learned that was solid to me was the word of God. And I would always go back to the word to find out what, what is the word saying about this change that's taking place. And I would often go back to the book of Habakkuk and Habakkuk 2, where, you know, he kept asking the Lord, it was Habakkuk 1, when he kept asking the Lord, you know, uh, how long are you going to stand back? How long are we going to go through winter? Because it's cold out here, Lord, you know, and, uh, you know, how long are you going to watch the destruction? And if you notice while you're going through the season, sometimes God never says a word. He knows his children. He knows no matter what, how many times we've gone through change, it seems like we forget what we went through. We forget that God always brought us through. We, for, we forgot that trouble didn't last always. Uh, we forgot to, you know, uh, put on the right garments, you know, to put on praise, to put on worship, to put on prayer, to put on long supper. We, it's like we forgot, you know. And many times it's in the middle of the winter or whatever the season is that your light comes on, <laughs> that it is the Lord that's doing this thing. Because no matter how much I want to get out of the process of it, I just can't, I just can't shift out of it, even if I wanted to. And I think I learned about the different seasons of life, no matter how much spring wants to keep knocking on the door and says she's on her way. Winter just will not let go because she knows she's got something that she needs to do. I was meeting with this couple last night and, um, you know, my couple's blessed. When I tell you, they bless my heart. And ladies, I want to say something to you. Don't underestimate the men in your life. They got more going than you think that they do. I think we have to learn how to tap into the spiritual side of where they are, because we all speak another language. And I'll never forget uh, one of the things that he said. He said, but I haven't lost, I haven't left my post. He said, because I know my assignment. He said, no matter what my wife has to go through and what she has to process through, I let her process through that, but I have never forgot my assignment. I love the way he came in and affirmed her. And he said, and I've never cheated on her. I've never stepped outside of this relationship because I know my assignment. And y'all, when I tell you, bless my heart so much to hear him say that, it made me think about how we all go through changes different, you know, depending on what's already in your heart and what has been already established in your heart. You know, see, when I was traveling back and forward down the highway, um, I knew that Dallas was not my home. I had a home back in Tyler. But but I but I made some decisions that I wanted to do something different. And if I have to travel to get something different, that's what I'll have to do. I found myself um, never complaining. I have never complained the whole time that I've been going through the shift like I have. I've never asked God, Lord, why do you have me in this season? And, you know, why do you, why? I never asked God any of that because I was busy processing because I knew in my heart that things were going to change one day. And my job was to be ready when the change came, not to keep looking and focusing on how long, when, my thing was to be ready because when the season shifts and when my answers and all the things come in, I can't be trying to get ready for it then. I got to get ready for it while God is showing it to me in the spirit. Everything that you see right now that's manifesting, whether it's in somebody else's uh, uh, relationship, in their, in their um, um, you brazen of their children, uh, whether it's them pursuing careers, those that you find that's, you know, moving progressively with that, that thing started as a seed inside of them. And as the seed went in, you had to remember 
that there was going to be a process of time that took place. Well, I've never seen anything harvest up that did not start as a seed. And nothing that heart that got in the ground like right away harvest up like today. You know, everything started with it getting in the ground and going through a process. Now, a lot of times we see people and we uh it looks like, you know, oh my God, they look like they just came up out of nowhere. No, you're just seeing the manifestation of what took place. You know, that thing had to be incubated, you know, and, and as a matter of fact, when a seed is up underground, nobody gets to see what's up underneath there. All we know as the sower that we had in mind what it was that we wanted. And I'm not surprised when what I planted harvests up because I had that intention in mind. A lot of times what we find ourselves doing is just scattering things. And that's what Habakkuk was doing when he was crying out. He was just scattering words, frustration, you know, you know, maybe it was just too much for his eyes to see. You know, maybe he had not processed that, you know, God was taking care of things with him, you know, and all he knew how to do was complain about what was going on. But one thing I've learned about God is the Lord knows his children also. He knows that uh, there are some of us that um, we just don't like change. And a lot of times that's all it is. We just don't like change. We would rather things stay the same. You know, don't touch that. Um, you know, you know that that's how we are like, you know, with our jobs and and though we keep seeing things in our vision that there's a better day on the other side, what we find ourselves doing is complaining uh, throughout it all. But what I love about God is that the Lord did not get tired of Habakkuk's uh, cry, but nor did he come in uh, to try to, um, uh, nor did he allow Habakkuk to, pro to push the process. He waited until, until Habakkuk got through. So that's what you got to do. You got to finally relax and realize that change is coming in your life. And you have to stop resisting against change. And you got to let the Lord come on in and finish the work. See, because the Bible said, he that has began a great work in us, he's the one that's going to finish it until the day of Jesus Christ. Whatever it is that the Lord spoke to you in one season, and it has not manifested just yet, I promise you it's still on the way. Whatever it is that God has promised you in one season and it has not harvested, I promise you it's still on the way. Sometimes we have to make slight adjustments in order for those things to come in because sometimes what we have planted um, has not been on soil that's conducive for change. You know, our mind, you know, the Bible talks about how uh, the parables about the seed being sown and uh, some of it fell up on some, you know, stony ground. And uh, sometimes the birds of the air came in and got it. Sometimes it fell up on hard places because we're going through and processing things, you know, and you have to check. If you're not seeing your harvest manifesting, you're going to have to check to see where you sowed things at. And the key is to sow that word in your heart. You got to be present in the moment when the Lord is speaking to you about certain things. Yeah, the fowls of the air. Yeah, spring tries to come in. Yeah, something is going to come in and try to get your attention. But if you get whatever promise it is sowed in your heart, do you know that there is a covering that God will, will place over your heart? And the moment that you give God a yes, he will start sending the right nutrients in that you need, like patience, you know, like courage, you know, like strength, you know, like giving back, you know, um, he, he provides, he does all of these things. And he never gives us a time frame on when he's going to do it. 
but it does matter how you wait on God before things will begin to start manifesting. So when I think about, all right, God, when I get into those seasons, because they do come and go, even after I have manifested one thing, you know, it's like, oh my God, I'm shouting, I'm thanking God about it. And then I have to remember, you got some more seeds in the ground. And before you know it, here they come sprouting up and popping up too. And by that time, I have to resist the urge to be like a back and start complaining about what I'm going through. But instead, what I try to do, I try to remember when I was traveling from Tyler to Dallas, I kept traveling because I kept getting the word that I needed. I was, I was believing God for something. I really didn't even know what it was I was believing God for. It was just something that was speaking to my spirit. I did not know some 20 years later that God would make a strategic move in my life to where you're not even asking for these things, but the seed was still in the ground that wherever you need to be at in order for this thing to harvest up, the Lord will literally move you from one place to another just to get you there. Still got the discontentment. You know, you're still longing for things, but you're not complaining about it, you know? And I think the day uh, that we finally get a revelation that it is the Lord that's doing this work within us, you have a tendency to relax. Habakkuk went back and said, all right, God, I'll take my watch. See, sometimes you got to get out of some stuff. You, you have to get out of complaining. You have to get out of worry. You know, you got to get out of struggle. You know, you, you, you got to get out of the old. You know, in order for even the, the, the dawning of day to come in. And there are things that you have to speak to yourself day in and day out. You know, he that shall come will come. And he will not tarry. Though the vision tarries, the Lord said to wait for it because in the end it's going to speak and it will not lie. Don't be anxious. See, see every day the Lord is going to give you the right word to sow into that ground again. Though the vision tear is way for it. Because in the end, it's going to speak and it shall not lie. So you can tell when your when your harvest is 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 really, really in that. It's 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 like it's I'm in that groove now. Because the more you find yourself not complaining and you're pouring the word on top of it, do you know that you are producing a greater harvest to come up? And it's like, all right, nobody's agitating this process we're going in, going through. They're praying us through, you know, we're getting to the other side. Help is coming along the way when they need to come in. I'm not getting anxious about anything. And it's something about where the Lord comes in and he comes in and shows you a little bit of a harvest. I always say that it's like a, a little leaf coming up on the side. You know, the Bible says after you've done the will of God, the Lord said you might obtain the promise of God. And sometimes doing the will of God, I just get a little bud. But when the bud comes in, man, when I tell you, it's, it's a day of rejoice. See, I don't have to see the whole picture just yet, you know, because I really don't always know what it is that I'm really trying to bring in. Because most of the time, what God is bringing in is way bigger than what we thought anyway, you know. And, but when I see that little old bud, when I see that little old leaf on the side of it, I said, Lord, that thing is still living up underneath it. Oh, my God, that dream. Lord, you remembered me, you know, just little bitty things that's up under. And I'm like, God, I hear, I can hear. See, it's, it's times like that, that I think the Lord is trying to teach us how to hear his voice. Isn't that what he said? My sheep know my voice. And a stranger, they will not follow. They don't answer to things that don't come from the father. And you don't answer to rejection. You know, you don't answer to uh, hatred or malice, uh, envy, strife. You don't answer to those things. But you answer to love. You answer to perfect love, as a matter of fact. You answer to peace, you know. And while you're in those places, it's something about how the Lord keeps on providing. And before long, 
opportunities will begin to start presenting themselves before you to where you're trying to pick and choose, Lord, which one do I go? Where do I go? Where do I go? But it's something about how the Lord will send in just what you need at the right time. Uh, Y'all here it is 20 some years later and uh, it's not even happening the way that I thought, you know, because we can only fan some things so far. What the Lord said, he prophesies and parts does. He doesn't give it all to us. But every day I wake up, you know, I have to tell the Lord, thank you, because I'm so far from where I used to be. You know, as a matter of fact, I don't even know what all you have laid out for me. But every day I'm going to put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaven. It's just in case it tries to come in. I'm going to put on the garment of praise. You know, I'm going to remember not to be anxious about anything, but by prayer and supplication. Just let my request be. All I want to do is serve and all I want to do is help. You know, and God's got a way of opening up doors for you that, uh, you know, you you just couldn't imagine. Uh, I was sharing with you guys a testimony. I'm going to close on this this morning. Uh, I was sharing with you guys the testimony of how uh, when when transitioning into I've transitioned into so many uh, things that, you know, I just take the Lord at his word. You know, the timing belongs to you, God. And um, I was transitioning in uh, in this new space um, in the workforce that I'm in. And in my mind, I saw it. I, I didn't really know what to think. I just saw it as one thing. And, uh, and, and when you get there, it's much bigger and much grander than you think. And you know how if you were over there uh, whining and belly aching about how long, how long, and you weren't preparing for what was coming, you would miss the entire moment. Because a lot of times we have our own imagination of what blessings look like. And uh, oftentimes uh, the blessings that, um, that are going to be produced in our lives is going gonna, is gonna to come in a way uh, that sometimes looks very uh, foreign to some, but it ain't foreign to you. See, once you have walked with God for a while, and you have learned how to tune your voice, your ear to his plan, his problem. You shut out everything, everything that will stop your harvest from coming in. You know, uh, doubters, um, you know, sometimes people want to throw garbage on you. You know, uh, sometimes people trying to, you know, bring up the past and all of that. And when I hear people bring up the past, I said, they surely are not embracing their future. You can't be looking in the rearview mirror and moving forward, too, at the same time. And so I look for people that are also moving in that way. You know, that that's the heartbeat of God. I'm looking for something that has life. And when I touch up with that, it's like everything begins to start just exploding. And uh, it also comes in to let me know once you've gotten to that place, you'll never go back. You won't go. I think that's why my hunger uh, became so strong like it did uh, for my dreams and my visions, you know, because I saw it manifesting in other people's lives. I saw these things manifesting right in front of my face, you know, and I'm thinking, Lord, I don't know what it took for them to get there, but, you know, I believe that the seed is in the ground and all I got to do is get on right on the right ground. And the same thing that you did for them, you'll do it for me too. And so I learned the process of waiting. I'm not waiting to see some type of manifestation, period. I've already seen a manifestation in somebody else's life. And I just know that my God loves me too. And the same thing that God wants for my life, he will do that. So what I finally learned how to do is, all right, there's a, there's, there's a shedding of the old that's taking place. That, that, that's what this is. You know, before spring can come in, winter has got to shed herself. You know, she, she's got to put away some things. You know, you got to put away um, the, the grumbling. And you got to put away, uh, he quit me. You got to put away what somebody did to you, what somebody did not do for you. Uh, you got to put away, um, you know, why didn't somebody come to help? You got to put away all that stuff. Because it's obvious if they could help you, they would have helped you. But because maybe I'm seeing something much greater than whatever is around me currently, 
I got to get, I got to get to what is calling out to me. And when I get to what's calling out to me, that's where I'm going to see the flourishing begin to start taking place. Um, Y'all yesterday, we were getting ready for a big summit, you know, today. And um, y'all, when I walked in the door, I said, I've been here before. Y'all remember the day I told y'all about when we were, uh, we, I had been called over to uh, the church to do something that they had going on. And I walked in the sanctuary and I said, I've been here before. I've been here before. I've been there before in my spirit. And it was a place where you got to wait for God to keep manifesting. And so yesterday I walked in the door and I said, I've been here before. I've been here. But you got to humble yourself, Marilyn, under the mighty hand of God. And he's going to exalt you in due time. You don't have to tell, you don't have to prove to nobody that you've been here. See, I already know spring's going to come in. And I already know winter's going to leave, too. It's all about waiting your season. And um, Miss Jeannie, the same lady that was kind of uh, reluctant to uh, uh, get to know you in the office, she said, Miss Marilyn, next year, this will be your project. And I'm looking and I'm thinking, no way, God. No way. But y'all, as I walked around that room, I thought about girl talk. I thought about all this stuff we had been doing. I looked at how they were setting up and how they were putting it all together. And Lord, I've been here before. And y'all, all I could do is smile within my heart. See, I'm still a seed in the ground, but it's something about the smile that came in. They said, Lord, you're manifesting whatever this thing. I don't even know what all it is, but then I saw the hands that were moving in that had to play a part of it. And I said, oh, we're waiting for the stage to be set. Got to get the right people in the right places. You know, I'm learning a lot. You know, things that could be missed on somebody else's watch. When you get a chance, when you sit back and you um, um, really observe, you get a chance to see, oh, that that's a thing can be switched. Oh, that's it. But I'm doing with a grateful heart. That, that, see, because that's not my dream. That's Bishop Jake's dream. But I'm looking, I saw, oh, yeah, get the right people in the right places. Oh, my God. Now I see where you say it's better to obey God than to deal with the sacrifice. I get it, God. You know, and then. And I'm thinking, Lord, everything that we need is already going to be supplied. And so the seed just gets down in the ground. But you know what? Before the harvest comes, the Lord said you have to shut the door till they old. Old things are passing away. I don't know if y'all know it or not. Y'all, as much as I want this winter to get away from me, because I do not like winter, I know it is a process. I know it is a part of the plan. So what I do is I go get my blankets. I go get my little space heater and I go and light that room up because no matter how much you complain about the process, it is not going to change just because you are tired of being in it. Sometimes you're going to have to buckle up and you're going to have to settle in and you have to let the spirit take you where it needs to take you. And I said, Lord, you know what? It's been some rocky waves. Ooh. It's been some rocky stuff trying to get here. But Lord, I thank you that you didn't forget me. You didn't forget what you had promised in life. You didn't forget when I was waking them little old kids up in the middle of the night, getting them to the church. You didn't forget nothing. And Lord, thank you for the glimpse. And see, that's, that's what I shared with the couple last night. I said, we're going to use this at the time of Thanksgiving. We're going to thank God for what he's already done. See, in order for you to receive the new coming in, you got to learn how to thank God. See, sometimes we we go to God and, you know, I need some people in my life and where is anybody going to be at for me? And the Lord asked, were you thankful for the last thing that came in your life? You're quick to want me to bring something new in. But when was the last time you said you thank God for the winter before the spring come? Or do you just want to keep changing seasons? When was the last time you just gave God a thank you? And see, why you're in the midst of worship and you thanking God, the, the doors begin to start closing from the past. And God starts opening up the door for new things in your life. 
I think oftentimes we forget when we're processing through life to forget to close the door. You have to, on purpose, put some things away, okay? That served its purpose, whatever it was, but it was also leaving some deposits in. And I want to know, did I get what I needed while I was in the season? Because things are, they going to change. And I don't want to be in this new season worried about what I didn't pick up in this old one. Y'all, I can't tell y'all how many times, me, myself, that I missed out on seasons in life, all because I processed things wrong. I didn't see it properly. But oh, I started saying, God, if you do it again, if you show it to me again, Lord, this time, I'm gonna process this thing right. We're gonna turn the page on the old. What has been, it has been. And I thank God for it, to be honest. It was good for us that when we go through different things, you know, we can't walk around like spoiled brats or thinking that everything's supposed to go our way. You know, we can't always um, expect for everybody to serve us all the time. Every now and then you got to learn how to serve, you know, but whatever you do, learn to turn the page in life, get, get to a place of gratefulness, a great, a place where your heart is just, it's just so full of gratitude for what God has done for you. And you'll never, you'll, you'll, you won't believe how quickly God will open up the doors for you to move into a completely different thing. The Bible says it won't be by might, nor will it be by power, but it's just going to be by his spirit. When I learn the ways of God, see, if you're in a season right now where it looks like you're repeating something, and you already frustrated because you're repeating it. You may have to go through it again. See, the winner comes in to teach us some things, how to be still, how to know that he is God. So know that the vision is tearing, but way forward in the end, it's going to speak and it will not lie. Your only thing is to get your tools ready. How are we going to make it through this, God? We're resilient people. We, we know how to buckle down. You know, when life happens, I always tell when my chick, when we, we go through our made I told you, shh, 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 shh. be quiet, be, be, be still. You're making up too much noise. You, you letting the enemy know where you are. Si silence yourself. Get, get to a quiet place. Cause it's in that quiet place that you start hearing God's voice. And sometimes in that quiet place, you'll hear your voice too. You'll hear where things were just too loud within you. God could have been speaking all along, but it was too loud in you. You know, you start silencing and you'll see the tears. God used water to water that ground, those tears to water the ground. I ain't crying no more. You ought to. You ought to go and let them tears flow. So you can walk around, silence yourself enough so that you can know what God is calling for. You know, sometimes when you silence yourself, you'll hear someone else crying. And God will just say, I just need you to go and help them while you're processing through things. Because after a while, the pages are going to turn. And when you get into the new city, you can't be trying to do things from yesterday in this new place. I hope I'm making sense to y'all. We're in a season to where we are putting away the old and we're starting to embrace the new. Whatever it is that you're going through in life right now and you don't like it, but you complaining about you don't like it, I want you to put away complaining. I want you to put on a heart of thanksgiving. Ask God to give you understanding, you know, if you're in a season where you're constantly talking about your past or what has happened, I need you to pack that stuff away. And I need you to start creating some new images of what do you want it to be? You don't like it? Okay. What do you want it to be? You know, and pack that old stuff away. The only reason you're still having the same experience because that's what you keep speaking to. Get ready to turn the page on whatever whatever was before. Forgive people, forgive churches. Some of you are talking about your churches. Forgive the churches, forgive 
you know, parents, because sometimes parents in C's, they do only what they know to do and just turn the page of life. And, and, and let's wipe that slate clean. Let's get ready to do something different in life. I guarantee you what God's got for you on this other side, eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. It hasn't even entered your heart just yet. But it is something that God is going to do for you. So if y'all just learn to wait on it, you know, you don't have to tell nobody what God is manifesting in your life. You just need to walk it out. You know, keep, keep stay in your lane. You know, do what God asks you to do. And before long, the world will see that spring, spring, you were coming, but you just couldn't come until it was time. Folks looking at you wondering how long and what about them and what they, yeah, that's not anybody else's business to know that. You got to get in there and process your own stuff. Turn the page from the old. Some of you need to turn the pages of, of uh, old relationships that really are not, you know, serving any purpose to you at this particular time, you know, and you just got to put it away and you got to embrace where you are. If you're married, embrace your marriage. If you're single, embrace the singleness. If you're in your, if you're, you know, going to school, embrace school. If you're raising children, embrace those things. Don't be so quick to try to get the next thing to come in before you take care of first things there. You know, let's get ready to turn the page, but only when God says to turn it right now, just continue to keep planting, continue to keep watering, let the right people come into your life. If you don't like the people that's in your life, now just ask God to bring whoever you need, you know, and when they come, they probably going to look like who was their last, but just embrace them. Don't give them a hard time. You know, just know the change will come when it's time for change to come. Amen. Well, I hope that I've kind of done this a little justice. Uh, but if you don't do nothing else, put a smile on your face while you're going through whatever it is that you're going through. You know, go weeping. It may endure for a night. But I promise you, joy is going to come in the morning. When I walk through them doors this morning, when I tell you more and more, that vision going to come to pass. And, you know, and I started thinking about, oh, my God, the people that I'm going to be sitting next to today. You know, people that's going to listen, iron sharpening iron, that all, like, all them years of traveling on that highway, who would have known that I would be sitting in a room like what I'm getting ready to sit in in a few minutes? Who would have known? And it's for my heart to rejoice that God promised some things for you. You didn't know how it was going to come to pass, but just enjoy the moment because you ain't through yet. God is still doing a great thing. I always say, whatever it is you connected to, it's going to fall on you too. Y'all not just in the room for nothing. Those same things are going to begin to start falling on your life. Matter of fact, it's already falling into your life. You may not be embracing it, but it's already falling into your life. Whatever falls on the head, it falls to the rest of the body as well. So one of the things we may want to do is get connected. Get connected, you know, like you should, you know, get planted in the house of God. So that you can flourish in the gates, you know, whatever it's going to take for you to do that. So I'm going to close it right there because I know I'm going to have to get out of here in a few minutes. But I just want to say thank y'all for just taking the ride with me. You know, I don't believe y'all just, you know, I always say that song this morning. I, I don't believe he brought you this far just to leave you. I don't believe God brought y'all into this room just to be spectators. I just want you to step outside and shut the door to the old so that you can receive the new coming in Habakkuk. You can complain all day long, but until Lord is ready for whatever that to come in, you might as well go on over there and take your watch. And that what he said, Lord, I'll take my watch. I'll stay in place and I'll stop to hear what you have to say. And the only thing that the Lord said, he said, Habakkuk, just write the vision down. What it is that you're seeing, write it down and make it plain. Stop complaining about it so much and just make it plain. What do you want? Sometimes people can't give you what you need because you don't really express what it is that you want. Make it plain so that when others read it, that they can run with. Make sure whatever it is that you are putting up as a sign of who you are, make sure that's who you are because that's what's going to come back into your life. That's what's going to harvest back up into your life. Amen. Well, that's that's it for this morning. It's so much that I want to share with y'all, but write them visions down. All that stuff y'all were seeing while I'm talking, write it down. All the, the journey of things that God has been taking you through, write it down. Mom's journey and your journey may be totally different, 
Your journey and dad's journey may be totally different. You and your husband's journey may be totally different. Y'all just need to find a way to meet up with each other in the middle. He never told, he never said that y'all were going to be doing the same thing, but y'all should have the same heart. When you come to one another, there should be a beating of the hearts that are coming together. That's what no, that's what lets you know that it's safe to stay in this particular place. Amen. Amen. That's all I want to give to y'all this morning. Anybody want to share? I, we're going to be on just a few more minutes. Anybody want to share? Maybe something you got out of this this morning. You're more than welcome to do so. Come on, Miss Nancy. I see your hands already up. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Um, this here, this was for me. I don't know for the rest of the women in the room, but this was for Nan. Absolutely. This was for all of me. Um, yesterday, I went into a space to where I, I, I got a little frustrated very early on in the day. And I had to remind myself, Nan, you have bad moments. You don't have bad days no more. You can't go back and start doing what you used to do because you already know what to do now in this season and you got to be ready. You know, that whole thing where people say you got to stay, stay ready. So you ain't never got to get ready. And I had to really understood what that means through a lot of things that I've transitioned through. But on yesterday, it reminded me every day, you know, like since, you know, like my, re, you know, me moving around and relocating. I remember probably within three days, you know, I felt myself laying in the bed, completely homesick, completely feeling like a foreigner in a new land. Um, not being able to just get up, get in my car and see something familiar. And it, it got to me to a place to where I reverted back to the old because that was comfortable, it was familiar. And, 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 and I woke up and I said, Nan, open up the sun, open up the blinds, open up, open up the windows. You got to let some light in, baby, because it's, it, the light is shining. But if you don't open up the curtains, baby, you'll never see it. You got to do something different in this season, Nan. And you know what to do because you've been shown what to do. And you got to do it, Nan. You can't just sit there and think about it because, like you said, when you write it down, I have to go back and look at look back at what I've written so I can remember what the instructions are to do. I got to go back and look at the plan again so I can remind myself even sometimes what God has already told me because I get into a season of complacence and I forget what God has taught me what God has told me and I begin to start feeling a little bit more human than I need to be in those times of transition and yesterday I felt a cloud coming and it was almost like a like like uh the Carter B got this song and she she say something like hit him with karate chop. I mean, I hit it with a karate chop so hard. <laughs> I mean, like it knocked it out of the ballpark. Yesterday yeah. was an amazing day for me. I knocked that thing out and I was so proud of myself. I, I, I got that low moment and I said, man, in this moment, I need you to get on your knees and talk to God because sometimes my knees hurt and I don't talk to God on my knees all the time like I need to. But I know when those knees need to touch that ground, like I don't care how bad it hurt. I sore I am because I've been working out and I was like, Lord, I don't want to bend down, but I've gotten to a place to where I don't even tell God what I don't want to do. I know what to do. I'll be compliant. I'll be obedient because I know what God has already done. And if I know what he has already done, it's only, I can't even fathom what he's about to do. And mm -hmm. so this message is really truly for Nan because I got into a place of wanting to go into something familiar and I heard that Cardi be heated with karate chop, y'all. And mm -hmm. I had to chop that negativity out of my life, I had to go to my uh, my Negro spirituals, is what I call it when I have to listen to them R&B remixes to remind me. Sometimes Travis Green wait on it, won't get me to where I got to be. I got to hit them with some Cardi B instead, you know, to get me where I need to be because you got to use everything you've got. You, you can't leave none of the markers in the bucket and say, well, I ain't going to use that one because you never know when that one marker that you thought was dull might have just been the right amount of of markerness is what I'm going to call it. I'm just made that up. Yeah, I just made that up. But in order to get that task done, that dull one was the one that was needed, not the one that was pretty, not the one that was new, not the one that was shiny, not the one that you thought, because it's not about what you thought. That's the problem. We got to stop thinking. We got to start being obedient and start doing. And yeah. what you just gave me was you lit my whole entire spirit on fire. And I know now to go forward because I've been trying to get home. Y'all don't understand how bad I've been trying to get home. And God, I, I, I just finally said, man, shut up and listen. And God said, man, I'm protecting you. And I didn't even go back and say from what God, I just said, thank you. And I got real humble and I got real focused and I got real into the zone of thugging for Jesus because I said, whatever it is, God. And God showed me something on yesterday that I'm telling you, I can't wait to reveal, but I know to sit down and shut up because everything ain't meant to be shared at certain times. Amen. And that's, that's all name got to say. 
Amen. Th that's a good word, Nan. And, and you are, you're processing through, um, you know, it, it's something when you see something in your heart, you know, uh, that that's the only reason that you would make a grand move like you did is because you're seeing something in your heart. You know, the, 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 the major thing is to, to make the move. The next thing is to trust the process. You know, I got this SMART acronym that I use, simplify things. Don't, don't make it difficult. M, manage. Manage the portion that God has given to you. A, learn how to articulate properly what it is that you need. You know, say what you mean, mean what you say. R, do the research. You know, yeah, a lot of things we have to research out to uh, okay, God, you know, I've, I've seen this happen. See, you got to get a visual aid in front of you of, um, you know, that vision came from somewhere. You know, the Bible says that um, uh, faith come by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God. Somebody planted a seed in you and you got to you got to stay close to wherever that fire is at so that 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 thing can continue to keep being manifested and it's like, I got to do the research. Okay, they just give, gave me a little piece of it. And I'm going to take a little bit of what they share with me. And I'm going to do the research on that to take that thing just a little bit further. And then after I do that, I'm going to trust the process. Again, as simplify things. You know, a lot of things what we as women do, we overdo things. We overread it. We overprocess it. You know, I think that's just the anxiety that's within us. Maybe just the way we were reared, the way we grew up. Somebody was always saying, you got to do it, got to do it, got to do it, got to do it. And your mind is moving too fast. Simplify things. Take one thought at a time. Write that, write that stuff down. Y'all, we getting a little older. You can't just be holding stuff in your head. Write that stuff down, simplify and manage the portion that God has given to you. Because some of that stuff we put on our page that we think that we're supposed to be doing, God didn't give that to you. You saw, you saw somebody else doing that. And just because you saw it, that doesn't mean that's your portion. The A, articulate properly. I ain't going to be doing all that. Well, articulate what you do want to do. You waste time talking about what you ain't going to do and what everybody, no, 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 no. Articulate what you want to do or do the research. Who else has done what it is that you're trying to do and then trust the process? Because if God did it for one, I guarantee you he'll do it for you too. Yes, man. Thank you, Miss Nancy. I appreciate it. And I'm praying for all I, I, in my mind, I'm thinking, I just want to get on the road and get to where she's at. I just want to get there and just walk with her and talk with her and then get them and come home. But well, that's all you need is some seeds. Paul. You just need some watering in you. You need some motivation. You need some encouragement. And you're going to need that every step of the way until you can get up on your own feet and start walking. See, you got to get up under the shade of somebody else for a little while, Nan, so that you can make it to the next step. Just remember, rest in between. You just made a major, major shift. Rest in between. Don't be quick to get to the next thing. You got a process winner now. That was a whole season to do what you're doing. You didn't just jump up and do that. That was a whole season that you took. Maybe 30 years that you've been processing this. And you got to let the winner take its, take its place. Spring is going to come in and you can tell when the Lord is moving because the Lord always moves in peace. He doesn't move in anxiety. He moves in peace. Amen. Mr. Ladriba, good morning. Good morning. I see your mic open. Oh, yes, ma'am. Good morning. <clears throat> Can y'all hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, yes, ma'am. So I'm on my way to work, and I was just thinking about what you said about the season change. Again, I talked about yesterday moving out here to a, uh, not a familiar town, and just, you know, just thanking God for the change, the shift. The shift was necessary for me and my family to move out here to be closer to my husband, for me to grow as an individual, as a as a leader. You know, I was stuck in Tyler trying to uh, to to be a leader, but no one would give me a chance, but coming out to a familiar town and be able to grow. And and I just thank God for just everything he's doing in this winter season. I'm like, Miss Merrill, I don't like the cold. I have bad environmental allergies. So every time the wind blows, it's like I get sick. But I just thank God for the, the shift was necessary for me and my family. Yeah. You know, it's, I cry a lot for my family. When I left, when I came home to Tyler, this, this, when I came from the prayer breath and I saw my church family and my family, I cried all the way back home. But I said, you know what, God, you got me here for a reason in this season mm -hmm. of this new place, a new town, and 
teaching this new team how to grow and be positive. You got him for a reason. Whatever, God, you got me and my children here. I thank you for it all, Lord. And whatever you finna do in this, this spring and this summer and this coming up fall, I just thank him for the small little things that he's doing for me and my family. So I thank God for each one of you and thank you for praying for me each and every day. My family, my daughter, she's making good progress with her heart and she's thriving. Man. And I just thank God for everything he's doing in this new season, this new town. Y'all have a blessed day. Love each Amen. one of you all. That's the way to carry it too. You know, you, you embrace the new that you're in. Cause you, you, when you, when you shut the door to the old, you got to embrace the new. Okay. This is a major change that's taking place. And Lord, I thank you. I don't even know how to walk into this thing. I don't even know how, Liv, we don't even know how to walk in the spring because, you know, especially here in Texas, spring don't always look like spring, you know, but I do know that it's necessary when it comes in and, I just want to find my portion of everything that comes in ain't going to be for you. You know, you got to find the part that belongs to you. And once you grab it, when you, when you find it, grab a hold of it. And I, when I tell you, and sometimes you got to fight for it because the, the world system will say that you don't deserve this, that you don't, you know, how did you get this? All these kind of things. That's why I say, close your mouth while you're going through. Cause sometimes you don't even know how you got to whatever that is and just process through. And after a while, the Lord will show the rest of the world that I was just paving a pathway so that y'all can know that if I did it for one, I can do it for another as well. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Ladriba. Miss Marie, Miss Cookie Marie, I see your hand up as well. I'm coming to get, good morning, good morning. Good morning. I just want to say, uh, Miss Merlin, you look beautiful. Thank uh, you. I, it, the shine is, is there. The glow is there. Yeah. Thank you for an awesome word. And I just want to pray the blood of Jesus over you as you step into this new arena that you're going through, because God is definitely going to show you some other things today. Yeah. I can feel it in my spirit, yeah. and I want you to grab hold to it. Make sure you have a pen and a piece of paper with you, because there's some things you're going to need to jot down while you're going through this this morning. I feel it in my spirit, so I have to tell you that. And then I want to pray safe traveling grace for you as you deal with the business that you have to deal with, with your family. Mm -hmm. And I just love you to death and not to death. I love you to life, girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I just know I, I just I, it's a feeling that, I, that came over me just a minute ago about what's going to happen to you. So I just wanted to, group, to let you know it's, it's coming. Yeah, yeah. God has something for you that's going to blow our minds. Yeah. Be sure you got that pen and paper because some you finna get some nuggets today that's gonna really really help you as you go through your journey. And I, I'm just grateful to God for me to just get latch on just a little bit. Amen. And God bless you. That's Amen. all I have to say. Yeah, it's it's amazing you say that, Cookie, because you know I'm 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 always thinking in advance. You know, I, I still do. Um, I don't do the actual journey, journaling like I used to. Yeah, pa listen, Pastor Baker, I got him right in front of me. I got your pastor sitting in front of me. I did that to be sure that I got close to he and Laura. Uh, so anyway, um, um, I was processing uh, this morning, uh, getting ready. And the first thing I said, make sure you get your journal. Make sure you get it together. Though I'll be moving around the room, get your journal ready because you're sitting in the midst of giants today. When I say giants, giants on so many levels. And anytime we sit in the midst of Mr. Bishop Jakes, it's always going to be phenomenal. But we sitting in the middle of all the gurus, you know, um, all of the colleges, uh, the T.D. Jakes Enterprises, um, you know, oh, my God, Amazon is there. Um, uh, oh, my God, um, Vanderbilt. I mean, it, it's, it's so much. I can't even. It, it's just a lot ministries, pastors, leaders. It's, it's just crazy. Um, and it, it is going to be amazing. I've asked the Lord to uh, help me not to be anxious and not to be overwhelmed by anything, but to fill my space here. Because I'm just looking for my portion. I'm not, I'm not a groupie. I don't do that kind of stuff. I just want to fill my space. That's all I want to do. I want to find out because, you know, that energy that you have is going to pull and attract someone, you know, and I want to make sure to be there. I want that hospitality to be on target, you know, don't miss a beat today, 
you know, everything we stand in need. I thank God for, you know, all the people that are there. And then it also comes back to teach me how to work among my group as well. You know, so many things. I, I think about all the words that, that Greg speaks into my ear, you know, and how I can't even hardly, I can't handle all of it at one time. I just have to, you know, sometimes I record the messages that we have while we're talking because it, it just, it just takes you out, out of the box. And you got, you got to be ready to embrace, even if you've never been there before, just be ready to embrace all of the things. So thank you, Ms. Cookie. And then, like you say, getting ready for the travel. I don't take that lightly either, uh, getting ready to travel and be with, you know, family and, you know, all of that. I'm already moving ahead in the spirit with that as well. So just thanking God for it. Anybody else will take one more and then we're going to get ready to close out this morning uh, as we sow um, on the word. Uh, we'll take one more. Mrs. Stacy, yes, ma'am. Miss Merlin, Mama Merlin, <laughs> woman of God, Amen. my God, have our hearts not burned as God's, as I mean, my God. If I did, I needed this word so much. I won't go into it. But you touched the very depth of my soul. Amen. It was like, God, just make it make sense. That's God it. did just that. He made it make sense, Marilyn. And I'm rejoicing in God. And I know that it's already all right. Yeah. I, I'm, I didn't get on here for pity parties. I got on here to give God the glory because he is due. And you know, the devil is after the leader. When God has put such an anointing on your life, like he has, yes, we need to lift up Miss Merlin because she's got, she is doing the work of God. There are shepherds that are not doing this work. This woman of God is making an impact. She is destroying kingdoms. She's turned down Satan's kingdom. And I feel it all in my bones. Yes, ma'am. I just had to get on here and say, I love you. It was times I wanted to give up, but I couldn't because of the anointing that you have been given in this room. Now, this room is unlike any other room that I have visited. And I just thank you so much because I am willing to give up my past and go into my future. Oh, my God. I am so willing to close the doors. Hallelujah. Please, I'm driving. Please. I've got to keep myself calm. But oh my God, sisters, let's follow close to this woman because yeah. she is a true woman of God. This woman cares about us. Yeah. Oh my God. Miss Marilyn, God bless you abundantly. Amen. You Amen. and your family in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. Uh, you know, um, you, you, where you start is not where you're going to end, but how you start matters. How you go through things matters. You know, um, there, there, will, there will be so many things that you'll have to let go of, you know, and, and right now I'm shedding a whole lot of things. When I say a whole lot, I'm shedding a whole lot. I, I have, I have, uh, sounds in my ear. I hear um, uh, comments in my ear, shedding, shedding, because if it's not productive, if it's not taking you to where you need to go, why would you continue to keep thinking on that? Think on things that are lovely. Think on things that are pure. Think on things that have a good report. And the Bible said, if it be any virtue to think on those things, you know, and that's that's what I use to carry me through. It's not that I don't, um, you know, see all kind of other things come up, but I choose to turn the page every day. Not some days, every day. I choose to turn the page because my future, my future, looks so much better, so much better than my past, than my past. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to get ready to close out this morning. Um, I've got to be there at 815 this morning. I'm going to go ahead and, and get on the parking lot and 
and uh, be in position and uh, also to keep my coworkers um, settled and calm on today. Because everybody, one thing I'm learning is um, anxiety is different to everybody. You know, people have starting grades, but they, especially when you're dealing with a lot of women or whatever, we got a lot of men there too, but most of the time the work is done by a lot of women. And sometimes people have anxieties about a lot of things. It could have been about, you know, I don't know, something, you know, the way you do things or whatever, but I'm praying for my sisters and that they will, you know, stay at peace, stay calm, you know, God's got, God's got this taken care of and that all the hands will come in and get in the right places. I'm even praying for shifting, even within the ministry, uh, that there will be a, um, um, a, uh, a place of, uh, uh, to where we would uh, pass the baton better than what we do, you know, uh, to not make people have to struggle to learn certain things, but, and I'm learning my portion. I know sometimes what God has said is that you're going to have to be an example, uh, even coming in as one of the younger ones, you got to be the example to that because sometimes people's hearts need to be renewed. Sometimes they've been in a place too long and uh, you need some fresh wind to come in, but we're going to walk in with uh, good customer service. The same thing with us. Everywhere we go, we're going to make sure we walk in with customer service. Well, we're going to close out this morning on Habakkuk 2. That's what I want you guys to get in your heart. We're sewing on that this morning. I need you, whatever it is uh, that you have been staring at for a long time. And uh, you've been sitting in that thing and talking about the thing over and over. Um, I want you to make a declaration today that I'm going to stop screaming at whatever that is. And I'm going to sit down, I'm going to write the vision down. Well, okay, if that's not what it is, what are you saying, God? I'm going to get into a place where I get still. And I'm, I'm going to invite God in to have conversation with me. And I'm going to start writing that vision down. I don't make it plain. I'm going to stop picking up that phone and calling up everybody. What do you think? Well, what do you think? What did you think about this morning's message? What did you think about that? You know, how did that set in your heart? No, how did it set in your heart? What did you hear? And, and, and you, you got to turn the page on uh, uh, wanting to get everybody else's opinion about life. And find out what your opinion is about this. What do you say to these things? So Habakkuk, I need you to write the vision down and I need you to make it plain so that when others read it, they won't be misunderstanding you. When others read it, they can run with it, okay? You know, don't, don't, don't worry about, don't let nobody else write your script for life. Don't let anybody else run what God has given to you. Because if it doesn't have the right fingerprints on it, it's not going to work out like it's supposed to. What God has given to you, let God give that to you. Simplify things in your life. Stop thinking that you got to do everybody's part. Give whatever part back to them, whether it be your spouses, your children, or whatever. Manage the portion that God has given you. You are a mother. You are not their friend. You are his wife. You're not his mother. You are a, you're a co-worker. You're not the boss. Manage the portion that's been given to you. Articulate, you know, what, 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 what do you need from me? And sometimes, you know, the voice that we hear, well, they don't ask for no, no, you ask the question, do you need anything from me? Articulate. See, because that's what opens up the door for people coming in doing it for you. It's about sowing seeds forward. Okay. Then do your research. Well, I don't know how to do that. Just silence things down. I can't tell you how many times when I said I didn't know how to do something and then immediately, I said, oh, I forgot about the Holy Ghost. I can ask God how to do it. And just do your research. And then after you've done everything you need to do, trust the process. Let the Lord, because it's, it's, it's his harvest that he's trying to bring in, not yours. Amen. So we're sowing this morning. For those of you that are sowing, uh, we're going to get ready to close out in prayer this morning. I want to say a special thank you to everyone, not, not just any particular person, but thank you everyone for pressing through, for continually coming in, for taking God at his word, for being an example to others, for getting in the fight for getting out of the bed, doing something different, changing your mind. Thank you for all of that. 
you know, and knowing that your labor, it is not in vain. He that has began a great work in you, he will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. So Father, we thank you already in advance, Lord God, for what you've done this week. Father, we will never forget this week. There were so many things that were deposited into our hearts. And God, my prayer is that you will help us to seal it, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. That's what our seeds come in to do. Father, seal us in the promise that you have. Sometimes my vision gets a little blurry. Sometimes, you know, from conversations that I've had with others, sometimes I don't trust the way that I should. But Father, it's something about the spirit. When it comes in, iron comes in to sharpen iron. So Father, I pray that you would help me to shut that door of disbelief, a worry, how it's going to happen, trying to figure it all out. Help me to shut the door to the past. And Father, help me to embrace this thing called peace, this, this thing called God, your time, and th this thing called, you know, the help that, that, that I need. You know, I, I want to embrace these things. And uh, Father, when it's all said and done, we need this thing to come out looking just like you. Because we know that if it had not been for the Lord that was on our side, we don't know where we would be. Father, bless this time that we have together. Seal it in the blood. Pray, thank you for all the seeds that have gone forward, all the seeds that are about to come in. For those that are contemplating, should they, do they have this, whatever the case may be, Father, let them just try you one time. Let them just take you at your word. And Father, if they got to put some fleece out on the ground, let them do whatever they need to do. But I know that the same God that did it for one, you blessed us through a seed. You'll bless another one as well. So until we meet again, Father, we pray the hand of the Lord upon all of us. Give us traveling graces as we go to and fro. We pray for the bereaved family. We pray for the Miles family, Lord God, as they transition through this time. And I pray, Lord God, that all things will work together for the good of them that love the Lord and have been called according to your purpose in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Y'all be blessed. I'll see y'all back again on next week. Uh, remember, I'm not on Facebook. So if you guys uh, need to reach out to me, you can send a messenger. You can email me. Those of you that have my number, you can reach out to me and then I will touch bases back with you guys then. All right. Y'all be blessed and I'll see you back again on next week in Jesus name. Amen.